Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here. I've got another Master Duel video for you all. So we're coming back to our Everything Pile once again. Um, if you're looking for this deck on like Master Duel meta, it's still called like Ashizu Chaos. Uh, but this is definitely far different from that uh, uh, Ashizu deck that would try to mill you out with Necro Faces and Fairy Tail Snows and whatnot. Um, even though, again, it is the same category in Master Duel meta, this is definitely more of a combo-focused pile deck that aims to win, not by deck out, but by taking, um, making an end board that's, like, taking pieces from all these different decks and kind of adding it, adding them to it, right? Like, uh, we've got the tier limit, so a lot of the time we can end on a roll close. We've got... Uh, various synchro packages, so we can end on Baron a lot of the time. Uh, we are playing some Thunder Dragons as well, so Colossus is not out of the question. And we have Appaloos that kind of tie everything all together. Um, as well as some more niche stuff like the Psychic and Punisher and the Beatrice as well. Sometimes we'll end on stuff like that. Uh, but more often than not, it's going to be some combination of Appaloosa, Rokolos, Baron, and Colossus. Ideally, all four. We will actually see a game uh, upcoming here where we will end our first turn on all four of those cards. So, definitely be looking forward to that. Uh, this deck is pretty much my punk Thunder Dragon Bastille deck with tier limit stuff thrown in if I really had to like boil it down um, relatively simply. I guess I know that's still a lot of archetypes thrown together, but... Uh, these archetypes actually synergize a lot better than you might think, uh, particularly with the Synchro Engine being able to turbo out a Chaos Ruler, which can often incidentally hit like a tier limit name, for example, uh, and then kind of start getting the ball rolling on that. Funnily enough, and I wouldn't have actually double check this after my branded tier limits video because I recorded that video recently and actually forgot to put in Rhino Hearts, and I was looking at some of my other uh, tier limit decks, and sure enough, I didn't have Rhino Hearts in here initially either. So uh, I don't think you need a full playset, and really, if you really Really super wanted to, you could get away without playing any and then take out the Kaleida Heart too, but uh, there's of course no reason not to be playing the Rhino Heart if you've got a playset and are running a tier limit package. Uh, as far as stuff that's not super needed for, I mean, to be fair, this is like the definition of pile a pile deck, so um, as far as like trying to pick out what is and isn't needed, that can be a little bit difficult purely because, well, it's a pile deck, right? Like we're already mashing a whole bunch of stuff together, but like uh, just off the top of my head, like the Diviner, for example, uh, I've only got one copy, so I just threw it in here. Um, it's The idea is that like occasionally you can bring it back with Sprite Elf, and that's pretty useful. It's also not terrible to open either, uh, being able to send a Miller or a Shuffler, just depending on what your hand looks like. Uh, normally, Diviner and then sending like Kalbeck or Agido, one of the Millers, uh, is actually not as dicey as it's been in the past, as Tier Limit is still on the decline. Uh, actually, just today, at the time of recording this over on Master Duel Meta, uh, we just saw Sprite finally overtake tier limit on uh, the tier list over there. Um, so, I mean, in that regard, you know, we're not seeing, again, nearly as many tier limits running around, um, but all the same, um, still something to keep in mind there. All right, we are playing Assault Synchrons as well, but we're not playing Tunings um, for two main reasons. One, because we don't actually have room for them. There are still uh, other graveyard-based cards I'd like to include over Tuning in this deck. Um, and on top of that, it's definitely not as needed in a deck like this as opposed to, like, Bestial Sprite Synchro. Um, because this is a lot of ways to get plays uh, and is not nearly as focused on um, just going straight into a Synchro line every single time. I can't remember if we were playing Shinobi Necro in the last iteration, but I did decide to go ahead and throw it along with the Sprite Sprint here. Uh, just to, again, give us even more uh, Synchro slash combo options. Uh, this is definitely one of those kind of decks where, like... I would not advise that you pick up this deck if you've never played uh, any amount of Tier Element or Punk or Thunder Dragon, um, but rather once you're familiar with all or at least most of those decks. Like, if you've played, you know, pretty much any amount of Tier Element and Punk and Thunder Dragon, uh, then this a deck like this, um, it becomes a lot easier to, like, weave the combo lines together when you know what you can and can't get away with. It also definitely helps that, like, none of these archetypes that we're playing, like, lock you out of anything. Um, as opposed to something like Tri Brigade Sprite, where you're very much having to manage, like, you know, have I used Gigantic Slash Starter? Am I too locked? Have I used a Tri Brigade effect? Can I still use non uh, Tri type monsters as materials? There's not nearly as much of keeping track of that kind of stuff within a deck like this. And that, at least to me, uh, is often the hardest part of playing a pile deck, is trying to keep track of various summoning conditions. But again, uh, with this deck in particular, we're not really impeded by that at all. So. 
Let's see, I don't think I have anything else to say about the build. I'm only playing one Fairy Tail Snow because I only have one. Uh, a lot of decks uh, like this would definitely like a second copy, and a second copy would also not be bad in this deck too, but definitely not needed. Although I will say, uh, Fairy Tail Snow does activate a lot of effects. Uh, all of our Thunder Dragons, our Shinobi Necro, uh, stuff like that. So it is important to. Uh, keep in mind that, you know, we do like to have Fairy Tail Snow in the graveyard more often than not. Well, I mean, duh, that's usually the case in a 60-card deck, but in this one in particular, uh, I can sometimes get our plays going for us there. So, that's everything I wanted to talk about as far as the list goes. I'm going to break it down card by card, and then we'll get some gameplay. So, we are on 3 Maxi, 1 Shinobi Necro, 1 Diviner of the Herald, 2 Tier Limits Merly, 3 Assault Synchron. We have three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Oh, Assault Synchron, I meant to mention this too. Uh, you definitely don't need a playset for this deck. If you have less or even don't have it at all, uh, you could definitely get away with playing a list like this without it. But uh, three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, three No Punk Xeamine, two Tier Elements Havenus, one Fairy Tail Snow, two Tier Elements Shiren, three Tier Elements Rhino Heart, one Keldo, the Sacred Protector, one Mudora, the Sword Oracle, two Kelbeck, the Ancient Vanguard, one Agito, the Ancient Sentinel, three Thunder Dragon Dark, one No Punk Deer Note, one Thunder Dragon Hawk, two Thunder Dragon Roar, one Bestial Magnum Hut, three Bestial Saranir, one Bestial Druid Swarm, one Bestial Baldrake, one No Punk Foxy Tune, three The Bestial Lubellion, one Foolish Burial, three Allure of Darkness, two That Grass Looks Greener, one two, or Primeval Planet Pearl Rhino, one Branded Regained, two Emergency Teleports, two Call by the Grave, one Tier Limit Soliac, and then one Branded Beast. There's our 60 card main deck. For the extra deck, we're on one Tier Limits Kikolos, one Thunder Dragon Colossus, one Tier Limits Rollcolos, one Tier Limits Kaleida Heart, one Chaos Ruler, the Chaotic and Magical Dragon, one Baron de Fleur, one Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying, one Psychic and Punisher, one Beatrice Lady of the Eternal, one the Zombie Vampire, one IP Mascarena, one Sprite Elf, one Sprite Sprint, one Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, and then one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. There's our list, now let's go ahead and look at some games. Okay, let's start off with a game against Sky Strikers here. It's definitely been a minute since I've played against this deck in particular. Um, it's not been too, too long, but it's been a while since we've seen it, like, consistently, that's for sure. Uh, so we're going to be taking the first turn here, uh, opening pretty well. Uh, ignore this Max C that I threw out during my draw phase here. Uh, that was definitely a bit of a misclick on my part. I See, what happened, and this happens sometimes, and it's something I kind of need to work on, because it's happened... Only like three times, that's still three times too many, where I'll lose the coin flip, look away from my screen, assume I'm going second, uh, see a maxi in my opening hand, and then immediately just throw it out during the draw phase, only to realize, like, oops, I'm they actually let me go first. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I've done it a few times, um, it's just a misplay, but not a huge deal. I'm um, going to be starting with the kick close into Merle here. Uh, that's actually really, really nice in this deck in particular because uh, we want to mill as many cards as possible as often as possible. That's usually the key to continuing your plays or just making plays in general with a deck like this is to uh, just keep milling. If you just keep milling, uh, then it often becomes easier to find plays there. Uh, here we managed to uh, find a that grass looks greener, not even at the beginning of our turn, but a little bit ways in, because we used Fairy Tail Snow to banish the Thunder Dragon Hawk that let us shuffle some cards back into our deck to draw some more. Got a second Ash Blossom there as well. Gonna grab a Havnus off this Soliac, that way I can have it ready for my opponent's turn coming up here. I'm uh, gonna fuse for a roll close here as well. Turn is definitely still far from over there. I'm gonna link this Merle and Snow off in order to make myself a Sprite Sprint. And normally I think I would send the Shinobi Necro here if I had a way to go into Chaos Ruler, but I don't. Uh, but that's totally fine because we can just go ahead and send Merle instead. Uh, so I'm going to make a Kaleida Heart here, even though my opponent doesn't have anything to send back at the moment. Uh, to shuffle back, rather. Uh, I still like having this on the field in this situation because I can use it potentially alongside Rolkalos, right? Like, I can activate Rolkalos if my opponent tries to summon something and they have already committed something to the board. Uh, I can use Rolkalos, sack the Kaleida Heart, Kaleida Heart will bring itself back, shuffle the opponent's thing back, and then also send a, a tier limit to make a kick close. Uh, and then, you know, we're good to go from there. Uh, I thought that was better than just, you know, sending something like a Shinobi Necro or a Diviner. Uh, even though, again, we didn't actually get anything off the Clay to Heart when we summoned it. Uh, still has a lot of usefulness going into this turn. It's also, of course, just a great body to have on the board as well. Our opponent's going to lead with a Dark Hole. 
Uh, it's actually a little annoying, uh, but it's gonna be mostly fine because the kick close, or sorry, the collide heart and the roll close are just gonna bring in themselves back. So, to be fair though, if my opponent let me go first and they're leading with a dark hole, it's pretty easy to assume they've got like a Raigeki or another dark hole or something to follow up with, but. Um, all the same, still going to make my plays here. Uh, going to use the Shiren effect that we sent off of the Kaleida Heart there in order to make a Kid Kalos, and then we're going to activate Kid Kalos' effect. I'm going to use that to just go ahead and grab a Rhino Heart for the follow-up turn here. Opponent's going to Normal Summon Ray, uh, and then activate Roz's effect. Uh, Rose, Roz, I'm still not sure. I think it's Roz because it's got a Z, but apparently it's German. It's actually still pronounced Rose, so... Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm going to use Fairy Tail Snow to flip the Rose face down. I don't want to do it on the Ray because my opponent can just chain Ray's effect. And flipping the Rose face down here actually accomplishes a lot more than you might think against Sky Striker in particular, right? Because uh, Sky Striker spells can be activated if the opponent has a card in their main monster zone. Uh, and now that this Rose is face down, they can't link it away. So there's really no way for them to get rid of this. Um, I was going to say, even if they have like a linkage, which does require you to send a card on the field to the graveyard, uh, you still have to have your mo main monster zones free to activate that. So, uh, again, did not want to use Snow on the Ray, because Ray can chain its quick effect, and then my opponent will still have a Rose face up and can link that away uh, for the link to, that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, that banishes a monster, and then link that away into a Sky Striker monster. So here my opponent's going to go into a Hayate, but then immediately concede, because, again, they don't have the ability to activate any of their Sky Striker spells. So um, even though my opponent had a lot of disruption and did force the uh, Roll Close and Collide Heart effects uh, a lot sooner than I would normally like, in the end, all it took was our Snow in order to ensure our opponent really wasn't able to play there. We did, of course, still have Ash Blossom and Havnus as well uh, to potentially counteract some stuff there, but um, didn't need it. Uh, all we needed was to ensure that they were not able to play any of their Sky Striker spells. So that's going to do it for this first duel here. Let's go straight into the next one. Okay, so this game's against Heroes, and I think, if I recall correctly, this is actually the duel I was referencing in the profile, uh, the deck profile portion, wherein we're going to open, like, all four of the things we like to end on, Appaloosa, Colossus, Roll Close, and Baron, on turn one here. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm also 13 years old, so my opponent Sam is just making me chuckle, don't mind me. Uh, in any case, I'm going to start with e -Telly. Uh, I want to start with e specifically to see if I can force an Ash Blossom uh, before I use either the Zayamine effect or the effect of my Bestial Dubillion, right? Uh, although I guess I did use my Zayamine effect first there, but um, at least before Bestial Dubillion, because if they negated e with Ash Blossom, I still have a Zayamine in my hand I can Normal Summon. So, uh, they don't have anything, that's pretty great for me. Get to fire off both Deer Note and Chaos Ruler here. Deer Note is going to bring back the Foxy Tune. Chaos Ruler is going to find us a Sarnir, uh, but also putting the Fairy Tail Snow and Thunder Dragon Dark in the graveyard is very, very good. Uh, I'm going to sack off my um, Chaos Ruler in order to make Lubellion, or summon Lubellion rather. Normally, I don't advise doing this uh, if you have an Assault Synchron in your graveyard. Um, you would really want to wait until your Chaos Ruler is going to get banished, so that way Assault Synchron can bring it back from the Banish pile. Uh, however, I did not mill an Assault Synchron, so I'm just going to go ahead and utilize my Chaos Ruler now. Alright, now I'm going to overlay the Foxy Tune and Lubellion, both level 8, to make the rank 8 Zombie Vampire. I uh, would like to have a Hope Harbinger and or a number 90 in the extra deck, but I uh, just don't have enough room. Uh, zombie Vamp is more important for extending in a deck like this anyway. Uh, as always, you know, we want to keep milling. Uh, in this case, we managed to find and summon a Rhino Heart. That's going to make us a Kit Kalos, so bridging directly from the Synchro line to the a Tier Limit line in a very convenient way in this game here. Uh, Kit Kalos is going to add and then summon the Murley. Uh, between the Murley and Kit Kalos, we're going to mill another 8 cards off the top of our deck. That is now... Uh, 5 from Chaos Ruler, 4 from Zombie Vamp, that's 9 plus 8 is 17! 17. 17 mills so far, that's pretty great. Uh, like I said, you just want to keep milling. Just keep sending cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. That is like, the main way to always make sure that you can keep extending it and playing in this deck. Alright, here comes the Roll Close. Uh, and not that I thought my opponent had it by this stage, of course, but, uh, if my opponent does happen to have Nibiru, now they can't use it anymore, which is nice. I'm starting to think about Nibiru a little bit more in this meta than I did in some of the previous ones, but uh, to be fair, Nibiru still isn't seeing like too, too much play. I wonder if, actually if there is a statistic for it as far as usage rate. That, that's one I would love to know the rate of for Nibiru. I don't think there is actually, though, but 
Anyway, gonna bring back Chaos Ruler, and we even got to make a sprint, sending the Shinobi Necro first. That's going to ensure that we are able to get the Baron de Fleur online. Gonna normal summon this Keldo before linking it off into an IP Mascarena. I thought about keeping the IP Mascarena around with the Sprite's friend, but I found a bit of a better line here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna summon back the Thunder Dragon Dark and then summon this Magnum Hut. But rather than use the Thunder Dragon Dark to make Colossus, uh, I'm gonna go, excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and make Appalooza with these four. And because Sprint is a Thunder Monster and I activated a Thunder Effect from hand this turn, uh, I get to just go ahead and summon the uh, Colossus using Sprint. Now, to be fair, I still should have put Thunder Dragon Colossus in the main monster zone, um, but it's kind of funny to see an end board where Apple loses in the main monster zone and Colossus in the extra monster zone. But there you go, there's an example of a hand where, again, we ended on like a very, very scary end board of Appalooza for three monster negates, Baron de Fleur for an Omni negate, roll close for any kind of a special summon negate, and then the Thunder Dragon Colossus will also ensure that our opponent is not able to search cards. And a deck like Hero, especially, which already is... Um, has a bit of a time playing through even a couple forms of disruption, uh, definitely has a much more difficult time against... Uh, Five negates, the inability to search, uh, as well as, don't forget, we had uh, branded, we not only actually had branded beasts on the field, but also Havnus and two Bistiles in our hand. So, um, yeah, <laughs> there was, uh, I don't think there was really any way that duel was ending well for our opponent there. But uh, it's hard to give a specific combo line that will end you on something like that, just due to the nature of the deck. But uh, as always as ever, my advice is just keep milling. Uh, we do have a couple more games to show off. Let's go straight into the next one here. All right, this opponent is going to be on Branded Tier Limits, a 40-card variant of the deck here. And let's see, I'm trying to remember... Okay, we are going second this one. I, th I thought we went second at least one of these here. All right, so opening Ash Blossom and Bistial, a Bistial monster, really, period. Uh, already looking good for the opening hand here going second. Who's going to Rota? I'm not going to chain the Ash Blossom because... Regardless if my opponent is playing tier limits or heroes or pretty much any deck that plays Rota, they'll probably have another target for me to negate with the Ash Blossom, uh, usually the thing that they search, so in this case I'm just going to go ahead and let it resolve. Now, I actually want to talk for a moment about this Agido here, because I did have an opportunity to negate the Agido with the Ash Blossom. Uh, however, I thought it was odd that my opponent used their normal summon. I, I just think it's weird that they roted for the Rhino Heart, but then normal summon Diviner to mill Agido anyway. And I really did think about just punishing them with the Ash Blossom, but I also had the thought of like, if they did that, if they roted for the Rhino Heart, but then normal summon Diviner, there's no way they're done after normal summoning Diviner, right? I mean, maybe they could be, and maybe I just like, you know, missed an opportunity to really punish an opponent who made a suboptimal play, but it's really hard for me to believe that they don't have any further extenders after that, uh, making the plays that they did. So, I'm gonna let the Agito resolve. Uh, it turns out that both my opponent and I milled a Mudora, so it's actually not gonna end up mattering here really what either of us milled, which both of us did mill plays, to be fair. My opponent milled a lot of stuff, uh, and I managed to hit a Rhino Heart, which could have discarded the Murley in order to, again, just start making plays there, so. Uh, their screen will resolve, so they will be getting a Soliac here. We have to be mindful of that, but no nothing else on their end is going to resolve. Setting a card and then activating Heartbeat, pitching the Rhino Heart, and then passing? Question mark? I think what ended up happening here... I actually don't know what happened here. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, obviously my opponent thought that their Rhino Heart was going to proc. Um, and I thought it was too. I mean, there's no other reason why I think you would Heartbeat your own. I'm assuming that was a Soliac that they Heartbeated. But... Um, yeah, I, I don't know if they just forgot that, like, hey, you have to send a tier limit card from your hand to the graveyard in order to, like, you know, bring this back. <laughs> or maybe the Heartbeat Send Rhino Heart was their original thought process when they searched the Rhino Heart. Like, maybe they were planning on doing that either way. Um, to be fair, if that had worked, that would have been really good for my opponent. Uh, I would have had to have Ash Blossom the Rhino Heart search, and they would have gotten to make a Baron anyway. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, I think I think that they thought they were going to bring the Rhino Heart back is my best guess as to what that play was all about. But in any case, I'm going to start by activating Brains or Regain and then popping off with the Shiren effect. Well, it's going to chain an Ash Blossom. Totally fine with me. 
Uh, although I am a little bit more concerned about this Merly finding something here. And by finding something, I really just mean like a light or a dark monster. Although, no, no, we actually milled a Thunder Dragon Dark earlier. What am I saying? Of course, because of the Agito. So, we actually didn't need this Merly to find anything. Um, because even if it doesn't, what we can do here is we can still just link these out for a sprint and uh, try to find a place that way. Uh, thankfully, we did manage to grab an Assault Synchron here, which I'm going to go ahead and toss out. Honestly, there are so many ways I could have proceeded from there. Like, could have gone straight into a Baron, could have gone straight into a Chaos Ruler, um, could have gone into a Sprint. Actually, that might have... Well, no, because then we would have had a Tuner. Um, or a non-tuner. We, just, we just wouldn't have been able to make an 8. So, yeah, no, I think the line... No, no, yeah, the line there was definitely to sink Assault Synchron and Saranir into Chaos Ruler. Send Lubellion. You even get to chain block the Chaos Ruler with Saranir. Send Lubellion. Excavate. Then you can... We'll still have the Merly and the Chaos Ruler on board, right? You can link those two for the Sprint. Sprint, send Shinobi Necro... Now, now we're just off to the races at that point. Now we have plenty of options as far as making plays moving forward goes. And um, I think my opponent realized that and just ultimately ended up conceding there. Uh, we do still have one more game to hop into, so let's go take a look at that here. All right, our final game for this video is going to be against Runic Stun. Been a minute since I've seen Runic. It's actually like... It's funny because I just, I just said the same thing about Sky Striker earlier in the video. I think I've been seeing Runic at about the same frequency I've been seeing Sky Striker lately, which is uh, not much at all. Not much at all. So this is an interesting opening hand here. I'm going to start with the Xeomine. Uh, even though I've got a lure here, I don't want to banish this Havnus if I don't absolutely need to. So um, I'm going to see if the Chaos Ruler can find me a different Dark Monster here. Uh, besides, if the Chaos Ruler gets disrupted, I think I would still rather just end on Maxi and Havnus for the opponent's turn anyway. Alright, Chaos Ruler, Chain Link 1, do note Chain Link 2 is always to Chain Block, and I'll bring back the Foxy Tune, uh, in case we need to go into a Zombie Vamp for some more draws there. Okay, this is definitely looking really, really good. Uh, I'm going to ultimately grab the Sarnir here and allow the Shiren to fall into the graveyard. Uh, that will not only allow it to trigger, but then I can also chain block the Shiren with the other Saranir effect uh, in order to make sure that this uh, doesn't get blocked by something that's directly chainable to it, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, Kikolos is coming down, Kikolos effect is activating, we're going to grab ourselves a Murley and then sack off the Kikolos in order to summon the Murley. Uh, I'm going to do this before going into Zombie Vamp. Um, because Zombie Vamp will mill both of us here, I at least have a chance to mill, like, a Shuffler or something, um, before I start milling my opponent cards, and, um, you know, just in case. But, uh, we're gonna find a Kalbeck on this mill 8 anyway, so, uh, gonna go ahead and take a look at our opponent's mills here. And we know, of course, now that they're on, uh, Runic, so ultimately milling them is not gonna hurt us too much. Making a roll close here. Uh, gonna then link off the Chaos Ruler and the Merly to make a Sprint. Sprite Sprint effect is gonna go ahead and dump that Shinobi Necro in the graveyard. This is the line that I was talking about at the end of the last game there. Uh, banishing the Shinobi Necro and the Lubellion in order to summon the Chaos Ruler. Did have to banish the Lubellion because we still have the Foxy Tune on board, but yeah, we already had a second Lubellion in there, so didn't ultimately really matter anyway. Uh, tributing the Chaos Ruler for the Lubellion that will allow the Assault Synchron in my graveyard to bring back the Chaos Ruler. Gonna activate Lubellion's effect to grab myself a Branded Regained. Sinking. Do you want to do that before I sink the Shinobi Necro with the Baron? Uh, or to make the Baron, rather. Because the Shinobi Necro banishing itself will actually proc the Branded Regained and allow us to draw a card. Alright, now we're gonna overlay Lubellion and Foxy Tune for the Zombie Vampire. Gonna activate the effect here. This actually... Depending on what we mill here, might actually be another game where we can uh, end on Colossus. Uh, as well as Roll Close Baron and Appaloosa. I can definitely see right now where we have the means to- Although I don't think we've actually activated a Thunder Effect from our hand yet. And I don't know if we'll have the means to necessarily- Okay, no, we will now because, yeah, Thunder Dragon Dark is grabbing the Hawk. Oh, we're gonna make Beatrice. This is actually one of the very few times where I actually do end up making the. Be That's right. I remember this duel because Beatrice is able to set up so much extra stuff here. Uh, we can set up the Mudora in the yard. That'll stop a Runic Fountain from wrecking us. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and link off the Zombie Vamp and Thunder Dragon Dark for an IP Mascarena. And I've still used the Thunder Effect from hand, so I can still go ahead and make the Thunder Dragon Colossus. Although making it the extra Monster Zone with IP on the board was a huge mistake because now I can't use IP unless I use Thunder Dragon Colossus, but... 
Uh, I'm gonna use my other Beatrice material just to put the fairy tale snow in the graveyard. But I'm just gonna start by trying to summon something off of the uh, Runic Smiting Storm. I'm gonna negate this with Roll Close just to get the Merly effect off and uh, make sure we're all good there, I guess. Uh, opponent's going to chain a slumber to once again summon a runic monster. The Hugin is totally fine. It's not even able to activate its effect to try to find the Colossus here, but I'm assuming my opponent probably already has access to Fountain. I'm just playing assuming that, you know, just assuming it. Uh, Kiklos is going to grab the Shiren here because we already have the Havness. Looks like my opponent's trying to negate the Baron here. Things are a little bit dicey. I don't really have any more disruption left except for the IP Mascarena. Um, opponent's going to Reasoning. I'm going to chain the Max C, but I'm going to call two here, uh, just in case they're on some sort of a sprite variant. But I actually don't really know why they even bother with the Reasoning in this build, because they don't... I, I think it's purely to find the Amato Iwato. I don't know. Like, I looked, was looking at their list. Like, they're not playing Alistair's or anything, so... I can't imagine what you're trying to find out for using except for a mono a lotto. Uh, I'm going to activate Baron's effect on this back row. Opponent's going to chain it. It's a Gozen match. Uh, I'm just going to pick Dark so that way I can keep the most amount of monsters that I can on the board. Uh, looks like they're going to use Hugin to protect their Gozen match, but um, when it comes to Dark monsters, I have far more than enough to push for lethal here. I mean, even just with Chaos Ruler alone bringing itself back, but... I'm going to bring back the Shinobi Necro here as well, uh, and also get off the Thunder Dragon Hawk effect just to see if I can find something else, but uh, not that it is going to matter, because who well, was just conceding, and even if I hadn't found anything else, we just turn Colossus to attack mode, enter battle phase, and win anyway. So, yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for these games. Hope you all enjoyed them. Uh, let's just move now to our outro. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me. Uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way. So if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there for just five bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack. Uh, you'll find a lot more value than a pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot, as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.